And it's been done since the past 31 years. So today we have a servant of God by the name of Ajahn Subin who has been here in the in North America for 50 years already serving. Serving in Thailand. He has been serving in Thailand ever since for the past 50 years. He went to Korea to study and that's where he met his wife. So he went back to Thailand for, the, for seven long years and then he, uh, he uh, relocated to the United States. To, to continue his uh, theology studies. And after finishing his theology, he went back to, to serve in Thailand for another 35 years. He has uh, started many, many ministries, including uh, a, male, a male correspondent uh, uh, DLT classes and uh, radio station. And it's amazing that he has set up so many things. <laughs> and, as, and as a young preacher today, he will share the blessing with us here in this time. First of all, I want to say a word of thanks for a wonderful invitation for me to be here today. Oh, okay, I try my very my very best not to forget the guy that's standing next to you. He asked me earlier, how long does this church give me time for preaching? <laughs> Today, I say, go for it. <laughs> so I replied, you should not ask, you should not tell me that because it's very dangerous. <laughs> I preach about 45 to 1 hour without translation. Do not get into panic mode because my son just warned me earlier say, Dad, stick with the schedule. Okay? Thanks once again that you give me the opportunity to share the Lord's word with us today. Today, as we uh, not in print bulletin, we will look at 1 Samuel chapter 15, two verses 22 23. And the heart of the sermon today is that obedience is way, way better than sacrifice. Try to understand again that to obey is way better than sacrifices. You listen very well now because when I listen carefully, I do, I do not need to add it anymore. Uh, before that, I want to give you a quick background about this Samuel at this very juncture. Just later on, I will, I will go back and explain to that. Okay, later on, I will explain to you. He said that 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 
Because before I can even start, I just want to remind us once again that the very first chapter of the scripture until the very last chapter, it has to do with plainly say obedience. To be to be to obey or to obey is a very high on the top list of the scriptures. I say that the problem of our humanity is really can say that is disobedience. Because all of mankind disobedient, that is the reason why we are being far apart from God. Those who rebel against God before are the, are the angels who start up in rebellion in heaven. And then, and after that event, we find out that our four parents, which is Adam and Eve, also became disobedient. Literally, when you become disobedient, you be you set yourself up to be separated from God. สักแห่งนี้เยสุยาบริหารสิกาบริโภคสงฆ์บอกว่าพระเจ้าไม่สามารถจะได้ยินคำวินัยพระหัตถ์ของพระเจ้าไม่สามารถจะช่วยได้พ
การใช้ฝนก็คือการที่ปฏิบัติถูกต้องตามน้ำกระแสพระจักไม่ใช่ถูกใจข้าพเจ้า Okay, listen real carefully. Is that obedient? Is that you do what is God's will and not according to your own desire? และสิ่งที่ตามมาที่เราต้องเข้าใจคือว่าการเชื่อฟังไม่เพียงแค่ทำตามที่พระเจ้าสั่งทำ And uh, what to follow is that just because you obedient, not only that you do what God asks you to do, and that's it. บทความจริง Obedient. It doesn't mean that you follow what the Lord requires of you to do, but you must have the right heart attitude as well. If we don't have those two qualifications, the Lord will not give us what we want. If we don't have those two qualifications, God just cannot admit you into it. ถึงแม้ว่าเราจะทำตามสิ่งที่พระเจ้าได้สั่งแต่ถ้าเรามีท่าทีทัศนคติในใจที่ไม่ถูกต้องพระเจ้าก็ยอมรับการนมัสการของเราไม่ได้ You may be obey God in doing what He asks you to do, but if your heart still have a refusal or the wrong attitude, the Lord just cannot let you become part of His. ในในยศยาบทที่หนึ่งในข้อสิบเรื่อยไปในข้อสิบสามพระเจ้าบอกว่าอย่าได้นำเครื่องบูชาที่ขาดจิตมาอีกเลยเราเบื่อเครื่องบูชาของเจ้า Isaiah Isaiah chapter one start at verse eleven yes basically eleven eleven yeah what makes you think I want all your sacrifice said the Lord I am sick of your burnt offerings of ram and so on and so forth why God sick why is God become my survive why why พระเจ้าสั่งให้นำเครื่องบูชาซีก็ต้องให้คุณเตรียมเครื่องบูชาไหมเขาทำใช่ไหมเขาทำใช่ไหมเขาทำใช่ไหมเขาทำใช่ไหมเขาทำใช่ไหมเขาทำใช่ไหมเขาทำใช่ไหมเขาทำใช่ไหมเขาทำใช่ไหมเขาทำใช่ไหมเขาทำใช่ไหมเขาทำใช่ไหมเขาทำใช่ไหมเขาทำใช่ไหมเขาทำใช่ไหมเขาทำใช่ไหมเขาทำใช่ไหมกองคารวานได้เดินทางไปที่กรุงเยรูซาเล็มเพื่อจะถือปัสสาวะ When he was a young uh, young lad his mom and dad Joseph and, and Mary and the rest of the family clan go to the Jerusalem for the pass uh, for the feast of the Passover เมื่อเสร็จแล้วพ่อแม่เดินทางกลับบ้าน When the feast, uh, the festival is over, it's time for them to go back to their home village. <laughs> and during the, the halfway home, they were wondering where was Jesus? Because they had to went back for another two days. They went home already for two days on that journey. And they're going back home for another two days. So it took them five days all together searching for that boy. Eventually, they found the Lord, uh, the Lord Jesus, in the Lord's temple. What was the lad Jesus doing? He was debating literally with all the teachers of the Lord. So Mary went to the Lord Jesus, the young lad, and asked him, "Son, why have you treated us like such?" I love the next sentence. And 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 I love the next sentence. ข้าพเจ้าต้องทำทุกครั้งของพระเจ้าก่อน See the Lord Jesus even at such a young age remind him that he has a priority which is the Father come first. สุดท้ายในสูตรเกศมณีพระเจ้ารู้ว่าพวกจะต้องถูกตึงบนไม้กางเขน Eventually in the garden of Gethsemane the Lord knew so well that he has to move to the crucifixion. พระเยซูอธิษฐานอธิษฐานขอให้จอมนี้ผ่านไปจากพระเจ้า
And remember, he kept praying and praying again. Lord, if it possible, let this cup be put away from me. But also, let it, let your dying will be done. Even at such a young, a young uh, boy age, he followed the Lord's word. And even as a, as a crossroad into the crucifixion, he also followed the Lord's, the Father's will. Another aspect is that not that only when you when the Lord and His will ask you to perform certain tasks, not only that you do it, but you will go ahead and do it, although you may not understand as to why. Do you understand that? Sometimes we demand too much to God. Sometimes you you could not help but complain and say, Well, Lord, I've been doing what you have asked me to do. Although I do not understand it, but sometimes you just could not follow through all the way. Let's go back to First uh, Samuel chapter 15 once again. God command that Saul and his army go and fight the Amalekites. And in the process, you must destroy everything. Do not bring any booties and bring it back. No way. Okay. So what happened? Did, did King Saul obey the command? Yes, he did. He only did part of it. He spared the life of the Amalekite king, Agak. But in the process, he served the best of the chief and the goats for himself. So we are full of time. We just die, man. Like a sad, sad old time. But that day, we did not come from the same. We just married. So later on, Samuel came to see the king and asked King Saul, "Have you followed the Lord's command thoroughly?" That's all good. We just die, man. Like a sad, sad old time. So reply. Yes, I have listened and obeyed the Lord's command. Love. <laughs> Some will say, are you sure? <laughs> because those animals that you have kept, the chief and the goat, they're bleeping all the way to the heavens throne. What does that mean? <laughs> in Thai, in Thai uh, lingo, it's like, Aha! We will put it out, get out, and hold it. Put it away, but could put up. I put up the food. But, dear prophet, don't you know that I keep this fat, uh, fat sheep and goat so that I can sacrifice to our God together? No, your God, my God. He said that to your God. Samuel said, well, not my God, it is your God that you are trying to do yourself. Simply say that the way Saul thing is it's, it's just always impersonal. So the famous last word that Samuel replied to Saul in verse 22 and 23, sum up is that, listen, king, obedience is better than your sacrifice. So what is the problem here? See, problem simply is disobedience. Let's go back a couple chapters to 1 Samuel 13. 
ราชาพิเศษให้ซาบุนเป็นกษัตริย์ before the the king uh, dedication to make him a king king over the lands กษัตริย์ซามูเอลบอกว่ารอเจ็ดวันเราจะมีการถวายขึ้นชา and so Samuel told the king that you must wait for seven days before we set up a sacrifice system ซาบุรอแล้วก็รอรอไม่ไหวได้ถวายขึ้นบูชาโดยพระกันของตัวเอง So during those seven days, King Saul could not wait for for Samuel to return back. So he went ahead and do his own way of sacrificing. ที่จริงเมื่อเราย้อนดูในชีวิตของซาบุเขาเป็นคนน่ารักเริ่มต้นของสภาพดีมากมาก When you study uh, the book of Samuel, you look at the life of King Saul at first of the start of his kingship. He's a wonderful young man. แต่ว่าเมื่อตัวเองเป็นใหญ่ขึ้นลืมพระเจ้า But when he has more power and become more powerful, he is forgetting the Lord now. แล้วไม่ถอดสุภาพ And so go with his own humility. Have you ever seen people like that? ท่านเคยพบคนเหล่าแบบนี้ไหมบ้างครับโดยประสบการณ์ของผมมาสิ In my own personal experience for the past 50 years. So why is that? เขาไม่คนตอบสุภาพว่าพวกเราจะตั้งต้องเป็นกษัตริย์เขาก็หนีไปนะไม่อยากจะมาเป็นกษัตริย์หรอก In fact, before the dedication or the ordination of the king, he actually ran away, stayed away from Samuel. นั่นคือตั้งแต่ไหน But that is just the beginning. เมื่อเขาประสบความสำเร็จ But when he when he when he has found more success. เขาไม่ยอมเป็นกษัตริย์ He has forgotten the Lord. He only listened to himself. He has been told about this many times. He is a man who has a big pride. The Bible has many, many lessons regarding the pride of oneself. Let's look further. 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 ท่านทราบไหมบทเรียนที่สำคัญมากมันเป็นบทเรียนที่ครอบจักรวาล This lesson is so so vital to me that it's almost universal that it is universal ในสายพระเนตรของพระเจ้าเรื่องการเชื่อฟังสำคัญมากมาก You know in God's own eye in God's own being obedience is extremely vital แต่มนุษย์บางทีไม่คิด But for us, being humankind, we do not take, or we tend not to think like that. To judge, judge, whatever. As long as I'm okay with it, as long as it's pleasing to me, that's good enough. Okay. Let's go and look at another example in Genesis chapter four. Genesis chapter four. Remember the two brothers Cain and Abel. Remember the two brothers Cain and Abel. Go back to Genesis chapter four. Remember the two brothers Cain and Abel. Cain and Abel. Remember the two brothers Cain and Abel. Remember the two brothers Cain and Abel. Cain bring the sacrifice for the Lord from his crops, from his own crop that he has harvested. But God but he said, "Krug bucha kong kai." But God reject the sacrifice of Cain. Come down. Come on. I ask you, why is that? Cain ao kong ki ma jang rai na kwe nao nao si si. Ao mai pa cha ni ni. So Cain brought what's basically just a leftover of produce for the Lord's sacrifice, and that's all. Right. No, no. Abel and Cain brought the wine and food to the Lord. His brother Abel brought the sheep to come and sacrifice to the Lord. The Lord is pleased and accepted the sacrifice of Abel. The Lord is pleased and accepted the sacrifice of Abel. And the Lord is pleased and accepted the sacrifice of Abel. Good evening. Now, how do we know that? Hebrew Bible is because he bought them. The Hebrew, once again, chapter eleven, verse four, tell us this. No, we want to. Hebrew, then I'm going to read the first one. Why? 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 See by faith. What does that mean by by faith? Tam tam kam sam kam. 
job to Papa. Does that mean do every single thing that the Lord commands us to do? So you know the rest of the story that Cain went and murdered his brother Abel. The next example, let's talk about Noah. In Genesis chapter 5. <laughs> Chapter 5 talks about all the great men and descendants of the great people. But the 6 talk about the not so good uh, mankind. And in. Chapter 4 talk about the righteous line and 5 talk about the non the non-righteous uh, uh, descendant, but 6 the merging of the two groups. So according to chapter 6, by that time the Lord of of observed the extent of humankind weaknesses, weakness wickedness on earth and he saw that everything they thought of or imagined is constantly evil. So God by that time had the intention to destroy the world with water. So before the flood came he commanded Noah to build up a giant vessel. A giant giant vessel. And he told that the world would be flooded. Did Noah believe that? Of course he did. We read this all, 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 all the time in the Bible here, the stories. But think about it. Just put your, 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 your feet in the shoe of Noah at that time. Okay. Because at, at that time, uh, uh, in the world at that time, there's really no rainfall at all. And there's no such thing as the underwater uh, flood that will come up to the surface. Why would Noah bother even think about building a giant box like vessel that? right in the middle of the forest. Noah has many, many questions that he could have asked. In Genesis 6, 22 and 7, uh, 5, I love these verses. So Noah did every single thing as the Lord has commanded, period. You see? Around his around his circumstances of the day, he would have so many questions why he built such a Tremendous art. But the answer came and simply put that Noah did everything as the Lord had commanded him. How do I translate this? Meaning that Noah never once or thought about bending the commandment or have his own will into it. He just followed it to the specifications. Isn't that wonderful? That every country, every government, every mankind learned these lessons. 
พวกเราที่อยู่ที่นี้คนไทยรู้ดีเวลาจะสร้างตึกสร้างอะไรทีนะครับมีปัญหามาเขากินหินเขากินแหล่งเขากินอะไรกันพวกนี้ไม่ได้ทำตามสเปค Because in our culture and many culture here, just before they pro propose to build any kind of project, uh, the corruption already set in. Why? Why? Why cannot? Why they cannot follow the blueprint? Because well, they want to do their own will first. Remember in the very beginning I stated that, that to obey, what is that? To obey is completely universal things. Uh, let's look at the next example. Okay, let's learn about the name Naaman, the great general in 2 Kings chapter 5. This is a wonderful, great, great, uh, uh, <coughs> great uh, general. general. He has a leprosy. Okay. You know, once you get the leprosy, it's just tough to cure. <laughs> he went to all those deity around his neighborhood. It didn't, it didn't cure him. <laughs> So one day, one of the slave girls that's serving, uh, an Israelite slave girl that's serving his wife, mentioned that, you know, there is a wonderful prophet that can heal you, but he is in Israel. By the way, you should go. Call the Bible. So he did. By Hagasat, Israel. He actually went all the way to see the, uh, the king of Israel at the time. So, dear king, can you heal me? So, the king once named man came to him. He was very upset. What have I done here? Elijah, so, when Elijah heard of the word of what happened in the, at the, inside the palace, he told the king, let the man come see me. Okay. It is Elisha. It's Elisha. So picture this. He went all the way to see Elisha at his village, his little village. Now a great general with his mighty soldier parked right in front of Elisha's little little hut there. So instead of coming out, he actually sent his servant to tell Naaman that you go deep to serve in the river service. Naaman became very upset. Wow, I'm a great general. He said, coming out and do something with me. Why you just tell me all this nonsense? He was so upset that he started to head back uh, to his hometown. So one of the servant girls said, Master, if the man of God asks you to do this thing, why don't you just obey it? If the man of God simply asks you to do such and such, why don't you just do it? So he thought it through and said, okay, let me went back to see Elisha again. So he went and dipped himself seven times in the river Jordan. So remember, picture this now. Uh, great general dipped himself, baptized himself in the river. Once again. Nothing happened here. And the next day, nothing still happened. The third day, nothing still happened. And the sixth time, I don't see any improvement. 
<laughs> I must as well just get back, uh, get myself up and go back to my country again. <laughs> but on the seven times, <laughs> exactly what the Lord has required him to do, <laughs> he was healed. <laughs> okay, question here. <laughs> See, that is what sacrifice. What it does is what the reader means. So foolish to us, right? It seems kind of more mouse than a pork lamb. But I think we need to learn how to hear the word of God. If we are going to cut the book, you can buy it. Okay, one more example. Don't get up yet. Yeah, what's up? Okay, Joshua chapter 6. Okay, Joshua and, and his uh, and his Israelite has sure. has went to Jericho at the borderline. Okay. But that what? I told you say the raw gang from Jericho one raw one raw and I get one. So God command Joshua to tell the Israelite that. You, all you as a nation, you must, uh, you must proceed in the parade around the Sea of Jericho uh, for seven days. You must uh, walk it uh, one day, one round it for seven days. Seven days, one one round, then check out. Right. Okay. Long keep doing that to try to see what the. Now we have what? We did. So every day the whole nation, a couple millions of them, walk around the, the parameter of Jericho once, once, once for seven days, followed in front by the, the, the high priest. Uh, just to make the story short, long over, to try to say they can't do it. One and all, one day they do it, they do it, and then 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 they do it. So we learned that uh, after the sixth day, on the seventh day, they did go around seven times, and right after that, they must blast that trumpet. And we know that the wall of Jericho did fall. So you have heard the story before. Now let me go on to talk about uh, to obey what's in better than sacrifices. Do you know now that obedience is very important? My So, is that mean that sacrifice are not that uh, vital anymore? But really, both are just as important. But the heart of the process between the two is that is your heart being conditioned as to be favorable with the people. So, the last book of the Old Testament, Malachi, chapter 1, Malachi. 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 So, the Israelites in chapter 1 of Malachi, they completely bring unworthy sacrifices. And not only that, their sacrifices are not acceptable. They are also horrible as well. In <laughs> and, and some of the people actually stole uh, the item in order to be used as their sacrifice items. So now we learn now, right, that obey is important and sacrifice is also important. But our heart must also be conditioned as such. 
How about the next part? We look at the purpose of obedience. การเชื่อฟังมัน involve มันเกี่ยวข้องกับความสัมพันธ์ทุกทุกอย่างของมนุษย์ชาติ Literally, obedience involves every little activities in our life. และเราต้องเริ่มสอนลูกหลานของเราตั้งแต่เล็กๆให้มีรู้จักเชื่อฟัง And it is our duty to teach our children when they were still small the importance of obedience. ที่ประเทศญี่ปุ่นได้ยินมาว่าของอะไรที่ตกที่หลงที่หายไม่มีความสุขได้ In Japan, maybe you have heard that if you lost something or left something anywhere, it will be there. เขาบอกว่าแม้กระทั่งเข็มก็ไม่หาย They even say if you left a needle uh, somewhere, it can, nobody can take it. How do you clean your car? If someone will find it, they will look for the owner. Okay. What sort of someone did you come look to in Japan? A couple days ago, I heard about uh, a Japanese person did this. American tourist guy. One of the American was in Japan uh, lost his uh, cell phone. And for for some reason, it got away from him. อยู่ที่กองพยาบาล and one thing led to the other the phone actually ended up in the pile of the garbage หลายปีผ่านไป and many years have passed in the garbage dump คนไปเจอโทรศัพท์นี้ที่กองพยาบาล someone found a a telephone in the pile of the garbage เอาไปคืนเขา so he actually looking for the rightful owner and returned it to them มันเป็นข่าวแบบนี้เมื่อไม่กี่วันมาที่นี่ที่นี่ And this has become a big, big news here that we have heard. แปลว่าอะไรแปลว่าเรื่องการเชื่อฟัง integrity ต้องเรียนตั้งแต่เด็กๆ Meaning that obedience or the thing that comprises integrity must be taught at such a young age. พระเจ้าต้องการที่จะให้เราทุกคนเรียนรู้จักการเชื่อฟังขณะอยู่บนโลกนี้ Because it is God's intention that all of His children learn how to be obedient while they're still walking here on earth. So that we will have the right to go to heaven. You know, talk about love, uh, happiness, and the gladness is really uh, we stem from uh, obedience. ก่อนที่เราจะไปมีความสุขร้องเพลงเที่ยวชมในสวรรค์เราต้องเรียนรู้จักเชื่อฟังพระโลกนี้ก่อน Before you can go up to the heavenly place and sing a wonderful hallelujah chorus with the rest of the mighty hosts, you actually better learn the simple lesson of how to obey and write it on it first. สำคัญไหมครับ Don't you think it's important? มันเกี่ยวข้องกันเลยตั้งแต่รัฐบาลมาตั้งแต่ครอบครัวสังคมชุมชนอะไรต้องเรียนรู้จักเชื่อฟังมันจะไม่ยุ่ง It's very important every unit of the society start with the family, the government, and the nation must learn this lesson. Otherwise, we're going to be in such a turmoil. ปัญหาความยุ่งยากต่างๆนะครับนี่มันอยู่ตรงนี้เองครับมันไม่รู้ไม่รู้จักเชื่อฟัง Because the turmoil are coming stemming from the root problem of us being disobedient. ในบทเพลงสารสนที่119ข้อที่165ฟังนะครับมันพร้อมดีมากบอกว่าคนทั้งวงที่รักกฎหมายของโลกมีความสุขมาก I love this Psalm 119 and verse 165 Those who love your instruction have great peace และบอกว่าเหตุที่จะสะดุดกระดาษ And not only that, they find peace and happiness. They also do not stumble. ไม่ stumble, ไม่สะดุดกระดาษไม่มีอะไรใครนะครับคนที่เชื่อฟังพระเจ้าเชื่อฟังพระเจ้าจะมีความสุขกระดุดกระดาษ So who are the people that will not stumble, will not miss their step, and have peace uh, continually? The one who obey, obey. เชื่อฟังคนที่มีปัญหายุ่งยาก struggle วุ่นวายปัญหาผมไม่แค่ว่าปัญหาครอบครัวปัญหาสังคมรัฐบาลอะไรก็แล้วแต่ก็คือการไม่เชื่อของพระเจ้ามันจะมีความสะดุดสะดุดสะดุดสะดุดมันจบสิ้นเลย Believe me when I say this that when you're not living a such a great life and you're in such a turmoil 
whether it's from your own family or the government level, it is stemmed from the problem of disobedience. All the Pentateuch, all the five books of the Old Testament, the book, the book, the book, the book. and in particular the book of Deuteronomy. In fact, to sum up that in Deuteronomy, God commanded Moses that you tell your people that you, the people must obey me, the Lord, for I am the Lord. And after that, then I shall bless them. Every single thing that you're about to do or lay your hand on, I shall bless them. But if you otherwise not obedient, then the curse shall be upon you. I love this book of Deuteronomy. And I write a little notes on there to remind myself. On the one side, obedient shall instill the Lord's blessing, but uh, a bit later, uh, I, I, perp, I color them green because it's become the set of disobedient and the curse and disaster shall come upon us. Okay, I have a question. <coughs> so, you think God is kind of pity here? Why God seem like he pointing finger and tell us to do this and that, this and that? <laughs> Young people who are sitting here, why do you think mom and dad is so pity on you? You got an answer for us? They love Simply put, Poa Pomani Rakthanma. God is the same way. Because God loves us so much that He wants you to live the life and, and receive all His full benefit while you're walking on earth. So don't ever reply to your mom that say, oh, I'm grown already, I'm already an adult. I can, I can do whatever I want. Don't be like what Paul mentioned in one of his epistles that James. What? James. in the book of James. In the book of James chapter one that once you look uh, 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 into the mirror just to see the image, and then you already forgot what you have seen. That's a shame. It's like a man who has a lot of money. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. You feel good now? Well, you can go.